I can do another one for you too. That last one was like, uh, was, I'm not sure. But, um, so another one we get, oh, we get this one in, um, uh, in the Canadian Arctic quite a bit. And they sort of go. I need more breath. <laughs> As humans, we learn so much by listening to the world. Our environment uh, has always been a very important source of inspiration. And I think because of the collaboration with scientists, we have elevated that collaboration uh, to a new level we can discover how the world sounds uh, in a way that we didn't know before. Hearing seascape is our way of responding to what has been discovered uh, in the most recent scientific development. The researchers at the Scripps Institution of Oceanography, some of them placed hydrophones uh, in the Arctic Ocean and were able to capture sounds that we didn't know existed before. It's so beautiful and inspiring that uh, I just felt compelled that as artists, perhaps we can make a record of what we know uh, during our time. Uh, what is nature for us? You know, uh, the great composers in the past have written many pieces uh, inspired by nature. Uh, you can think of Vivaldi's Four Seasons, you can think of Debussy's beautiful Lamar, uh, inspired by the ocean. Uh, but now we know nature uh, in a very different way. And how do we respond to that as artists? How do we create artworks? Uh, as in 2019, uh, that reflect human understanding of nature. Uh, that for us is a very important question to ask. In this seminar, we have discovered several different projects because it was developed by students in the performance area, in the computer music research area, and composers. So you're going to see a variety of approaches that were all inspired by the collaboration with scientists. For example, some performers figure out new innovative ways to play their traditional instruments on the violin, on the trombone, on the flute on an oboe, you hear them in the orchestra. But here, because they've been taking lessons in a way from beluga whales, <laughs> from all these different creatures, that they invented new ways to create sounds that are in a way in a dialogue with what the musicians heard. So the piece that we did, uh, we called Living Ice, and it was a piece for improvising musicians and recordings of Arctic ice. I was working with a composer named Anahita Basi. I'm a trombonist, and I was working with a oboist named Juliana and a violinist named Ilana. We had access to underwater recordings of Arctic ice. So believe it or not, ice is extremely kind of dynamic and over the course of the annual seasons as the North Pole gets colder and warmer, you know, the Arctic ice expands and contracts over thousands of miles. And uh, it makes all these really beautiful sounds, these kind of creaks and moans and splashes and crashes and ruptures and, and breaks and ice pressing against uh, itself.
the way we had access to these sounds is there's a lab here at UCSD at the Scripps Institute of Oceanography. Uh, they're called the Whale Acoustic Lab. And what they've done is they've installed hydrophones, which are high-powered microphones underneath the water um, in oceans around the world, including in the Arctic Ocean. So they have just continuous sonic data of whole years of the sounds of the ocean. Um, so we were able to kind of access their archive and get some sounds of North Pole Arctic Ocean ice that really inspired us. Our goal was really to kind of show the variety um, and the kind of dynamism of these ice sounds. So we were kind of imitating some of the sounds, but also doing things to complement them and generally just try to kind of highlight all the different characters of this ice. And so that's why we called the piece Living Ice. We wanted to show kind of how alive uh, the north part of our planet really is. I myself, I'm always inspired by nature and science and um, the way that I compose my pieces, I combine a lot of like datas and they gave me the form, the repetition, the qualities of the sounds give me a lot of inspirations on how to make my own compositions. I was not aware of how uh, temporally rich the sounds of inside the ice is. For me, was ice something very static and having hearing this kind of is recordings for me was uh, is a kind of like a magic another completely new world of sounds um, and uh, ideas there were different kinds of spectrum of sounds um, and at the same time dynamic the dynamic was crazy sometimes when the ice were clashing together and we had recordings of that because of the weather uh, changing of the weather uh, it was massive very very dynamically extreme sounds and then we had all those like really very pianissimo sounds very very light sounds i wanted my audience to feel that um this is a moment of time and they are within the ice i wanted to give that experience also to the audience and also bring them this kind of awareness like this is the world around us this is part of the nature that is actually almost disappearing within years and years and years. It's a kind of awareness, but also knowing how beautiful and special it is. So yes, I think a moment in time that they really experience, how does it feel to be inside the ice? So, you know, it takes a really ideal collaborator to make something like this happen. Sometimes it takes years to find somebody who can listen, who can tell their stories, who inspire you, and who are really willing to do something together with you. And perhaps it takes someone with a greater imagination, ways to communicate more effectively in order to talk about your ideas to people who are not in your field. And I think Josh certainly has that gift. What do I find to be interesting about working with a group of artists? <laughs> it's a wonderful question. I, um, uh, I listen to these sounds, and any acoustician listens to, the, to their data um, on a regular basis. Although we, we listen to the sounds, we say, oh, that's the sound of a beluga, or oh, that's the sound of sea ice. Um, we're really only listening to just little bits and pieces of those sounds and really looking at them as data. As just what's the spectrum and how do you describe the frequency uh, characteristics? Um, but, I, but I found, the first thing I found is when just un unleashing a whole bunch of the recordings from the Arctic and from other places of green mammals um, into, your, into your group of students and, and working with you, that the that the, the care and like the, the, the detail with which people are thinking ar artistically through, a, through a, different type of, a different type of ear, a different way of hearing, it, it helps me to actually see and, and hear more in those uh, recordings. We sat, I remember sitting in the audio spatialization lab and, and listening to the piece that Harris 
had, uh, had composed of, the, of all the sounds of the Arctic ice. And, and listening and hearing this, um, uh, hearing the, like the dynamics of the sea ice in a different way. And he had recreated that. He heard it and, and interpreted it and recreated it in such a way that all of a sudden I'm thinking, wow, it really, is a, it really is a ceiling of ice. And you can sort of hear it, you know, you can hear it coming alive. And, um, and I remember I just got goosebumps when I first, you know, heard that. The greatest excitement for me about this project is I truly feel I'm a student again. You know, this is uh, what I want to do when I became a professor is that I want to learn, I want to retool myself, I want to uh, find out new ways to equip myself to have new imaginations. The greatest joy for me is to invest my time in these collaborations uh, with people I didn't come uh, uh, into contact before. I have been practicing my own uh, uh, art in, in many ways. I work with choreographers, dancers, poets, directors. So if you listen to this again, like what Harris is doing, like sometimes there's just a crack but it's super short, that's it. It was during this phase of collaboration here at Qualcomm Institute when I can work with engineers, oceanographers, robotic engineers, sound designers, these people that I feel like we are creating a new field uh, because we have a resonance deep in ourselves that we're pursuing something that we all share uh, a passion for. And taking all of our imagination together, perhaps we can do something much bigger.